In this video, we'll be demonstrating how to predict whether an image is a cat or a dog with a convolutional neural network, or CNN, in Keras. So in previous videos, I explained some basic principles for working with Keras, and then we moved on to focusing on some basics of working with CNNs. It's recommended that you watch the previous set of Keras videos before moving forward here, because we'll be using some of the items we learned in those videos and building on them here. It's especially important that you watch the video that comes directly before this one on building and training a CNN on images in Keras, because we'll be picking up directly where we left off in that video. So our goal has been to build a CNN that can identify whether a given photo is an image of a cat or an image of a dog. And in the last video, we built a very basic CNN with only one convolutional layer and one dense layer, and we saw that it performed pretty poorly. In this video, we'll see how our CNN holds up to predicting on 10 images of cats and dogs from our test set. And these images have not been seen by the model during training. So given the poor results that we saw whenever we trained our model in the last video, we're expecting it to not do so well at predicting. So we're here in our Jupyter Notebook, and this is the same Jupyter Notebook that we've used in the last couple of videos. And we left off with this model that we built with one convolutional layer, and then we compiled and fit the model, and these are the metrics that we saw from it. So now I'm going to scroll down to the predict section of our notebook, and this is where we're going to start today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a couple of variables, one called test images, one called test labels, and we're going to set this equal to next test batches. And just quickly to refresh your memory, we define test batches up top where we defined all of our batches. We used an image data generator to define our test batches, and this is grabbing batches of images from our test path. Additionally, my test path only has 10 total images of cats and dogs, and I set my batch size equal to 10, so it's only going to take one batch from test batches to make up the entire test data set. All right, so now let's scroll back down to our predict. So we define the test images and labels equal to next test batches, so this is since it's grabbing the next batch of 10 and there's only 10 in our entire set of test batches, it's actually going to be grabbing all of the test images. And then I'm just going to plot those along with their labels to show you what the test images look like. So again, just some images of cats and dogs here, and the dogs are labeled with one zero and cats are labeled with zero one. So I'm going to set the labels only equal to the zeroth index here. So instead of a dog being labeled as a one zero, it's only going to be labeled as a one. And instead of a cat being labeled as zero one, it's only gonna be labeled as a zero. Okay, so now let's print out those test labels and see what they look like. All right, so these are the labels corresponding to these images here. So before we saw a label for a dog was one zero, now it's a one. One zero, one, one zero, one. And then a cat, zero one, zero. 0, 1 maps to 0, right? So that's all I did there. Okay, so now we're actually going to have the model predict on these images and classify these images of dogs and cats. So I'm creating a variable called predictions and I'm setting it equal to model.predictGenerator. So in previous videos, we used model.predict and predict generator just generates predictions for the input samples from our data generator. Our data generator in this case is going to be our test batches that we created with image data generator. So just like before we would use model.fit on previous models, whenever we trained this model we used fit generator and now when we are predicting with this model we're going to use predict generator because we're going to be passing it in this test batches variable which is an image data generator. So that is the first parameter it's expecting is a generator. And then the second parameter we're setting steps equal to one. And this is just like we saw, if I scroll up, the parameter that we saw in model.fit generator, the steps per epoch, it's the same type of idea for predictions. So basically it's the total number of steps or batches of samples to yield from a generator before stopping. So in our case, we have 10 sample images in test batches and our batch size for test batches is 10. So it's only going to take one step within our test batches to get all 10 images. So if I had 20 images in test batches, for example, and my batch size was 10, then our steps would be two because it would take two steps to go through all the data here with our given batch size. And lastly, I'm just specifying verbose equals zero. And this is again, just depending on how much or how little 
output that you want to see printed to the console during predicting. So I'm going to run this. All right, it's all finished. And now let's just take a look at what the predictions look like. Okay, so here we are. These are the labels that it's predicting for our images. So looks like actually all of them are zero one. So what is zero one? That is our cat. So it's predicting for all 10 images, which are printed out here in our notebook. It's saying that these are all cats, which is not good, right? So let's just look and see what that looks like in a confusion matrix. So I'm creating a confusion matrix in exactly the same way as I did in our previous video. There is a video specifically dedicated to how to make a confusion matrix. So I'm creating this variable CM. I'm setting it equal to a confusion matrix, which is something that we imported from scikit-learn at the top of our notebook. And I'm passing in our test labels and then our predictions. Now recall our test labels, I arrange those to be these one dimensional labels and I'm doing the same thing with our predictions. So instead of having our predictions equal zero one like this, I'm only grabbing the first column here because we said that a zero one was a cat. And if we cut it off and only looked at the first column, that zero was going to be our cat and a one would be a dog. So we'll run that again. This is just the function here that I got from scikit-learn that implements how to plot the confusion matrix. So I'm going to run that. This is all covered in the previous video on how to create a confusion matrix. And now I'm going to actually plot our confusion matrix and see what it looks like. So again, this is what we expected given the predictions that we looked at above. We've got our predicted label. So we predicted that an image was a cat five times when it was actually an image of a dog. And we predicted that an image was a cat five times when the image was actually a cat. We didn't predict that it was a dog any times. So basically it's predicting at a 50% accuracy rate, which is no good. At this point, the model's not doing any better than chance. And with the model that we created, if we scroll up and just take a look at the model again, this is a very simple model. Uh, one convolutional layer, one dense layer, not many filters at all in this convolutional layer. And it's pretty naive to think that a model this simple would be able to do something as sophisticated as predict on images that are complex images of dogs and cats like shown here. So it would actually need a way more complex model to be able to do this sophisticated task. And that's what we're going to be moving towards in our next video. In our next video, we'll be building a model by importing an existing model that's already been trained on images from a thousand different categories. And then we're going to fine tune that model to be able to classify only on images of cats and dogs. So not the 1000 categories that it was previously trained on, but instead on cats and dogs. So we'll, we'll talk more in the next video about what fine tuning actually is, and we'll see how we can use it. But the first thing we'll do in that video is import an existing model and show how to build a model with that technique. Then we'll see that the fine tuning approach works surprisingly well. And then we'll go on to discuss the importance and convenience of fine tuning. So stay tuned for that. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. Thanks for watching.